everyone. I hope you've been having a great start to your new year and I'm really excited to share this video with you because I've been working on creating a budget planner for the past several months and I just got my final version in the mail. I do have to say that I really like this um, cardboard packaging that it comes in, you know, so that it doesn't get all messed up in the mail. So let's go ahead and open it. Are you ready? All right, here it is. Introducing the Nimble Budget. Now, what sets this planner apart from all the other budget planner books that I've seen out there is how I've set up the expense tracker section. I'll show you what I mean by that uh, later on when we look at that section. But for now, let's just go through what all is in the book. So the book design, this is set up like a notebook. Let me move this box out of the way here. Uh, we have it spiral bound so that it lays flat when you open it up. The cover is a glossy cover. The paper inside of it is a thicker, high quality paper for the pages to write on. It is a large eight and a half by 11 inch planner as far as dimensions go. So we open it up. We have a table of contents here. You can see all the various sections we have. So moving on to that first section, which is the financial goals. Um, you see at the beginning of each section, I did write an introduction uh, to help you know how to navigate each section in the book. So you see here on these two pages, we have room for up to six different financial goals to help you throughout the year. Each one is set up to really help you think through the goal setting process. So not just what is your goal, but uh, the significance of the goal. Why do you want to achieve that? What are you going to help you achieve that? How much money do you need to accomplish the goal? And then you're gonna give yourself a deadline for that. That could be short term, it could be long term. And you wanna come back to the section throughout the year. Say, if you only start with two goals, Number one, you want to come back and make sure that you are on track um, and actually still working on those goals that you wanna achieve. And if you achieve them or you are making good progress on them, then you might want to add some extra financial goals along the way. Next up is the financial reality check section. Here's your little blurb about how to fill it out. Um, basically, if you don't have a budget yet um, or you're just, starting out in trying to get your finances together and things like that, then this step is really necessary because you might think that you're spending X amount of dollars on eating out or grocery shopping or whatever the case may be, but really there's those are the sneaky categories on, and it's very easy to overspend on those without even knowing or thinking that you're overspending on those. So this section is where you write down and you record everything you've spent money on throughout the month. We have food, that's uh, groceries, restaurants, meal subscriptions if you have those, non-food shopping, and then anything else that doesn't fit in any of those categories. And then you're gonna total them all up at the end of the month. Um, January is a good month to track expenses like this. February is also a great month to track expenses like this. Really, I'm thinking any month except for like the major holiday gift buying season is a good time to start this. Then we have a section of debt pay down trackers. This section has 12 trackers in it. So this is for debt that you're paying off over time. Uh, car loans, credit card debt that you're not paying off in full every month, uh, mortgage, things like that. The next section is what I call expense forecast. So in a lot of paper budget planners, what I see is just a regular monthly calendar layout and all you can see are the bills that are due that month. But I didn't like that because I wanted to be able to see not just this month, but also a few months in advance. Now, of course, when you get to months like April and August, you know, of course, you do have to flip the page, but I wanted to leave plenty of room to write, um, you know, 
bills due or anything really that you need to spend money on. I did put an extra line uh, at the beginning of the month and there's a couple or one or two at the end of each month um, just in case you if you want to write notes or if you need to uh, write extra bills that are due at the beginning of the month or the end of month or things like that. Now what goes in here it's not just bills it's anything throughout the month any event if you have birthdays coming up any event that you have that you are going to spend money on you're going to want to put it in this section. Now the next section the monthly budgeting section. This is, I gave you all kinds of example sections and things like that. This is what is so unique and innovative about this paper budgeting system. So you have your income and paycheck section, you know, that's normal. I have a weekly budget and or savings challenge section. Um, now, some budgeting challenges could be a no spend week, a low spend week, you could be doing a pantry or freezer challenges, and you can just Google savings challenges. So we have monthly bills, but I've also put a section for non-monthly bills because non-monthly bills can often sneak up on people, whether it's every other month or whether it's if you pay car insurance every six months. So this is to help you build those funds to easily pay those bills whenever they're due. This part here, the short-term savings goals, this you might also hear referred to as your sinking funds. There are two different portions to this section because um, you want to save whatever your fund is, whether you're saving for vacation, whether you're saving for a down payment on a car, whatever you're saving for, um, yes, you wanna build up those savings, but you also want to indicate when you pull money out from those funds. And if you see here, I also put in some blank categories also that you can write in your own. Um, going back, I have clothing, uh, special occasions. This is like birthdays, anniversaries, things like that. And I put multiple lines in here because some people, including my family, we have certain months that we might have several birthdays in that month. So. It might look like too many lines here, but sometimes it's not. Uh, hobbies, entertainment, activities. Uh, you can make your own decision about what type of thing goes here. And then down here, um, I've put a little note to remember to look at your expense forecast calendar that we previously looked at. And at the end of each month, there is a reflection or journaling page uh, that you can write down what went well, uh, did you have any setbacks, and what changes would you like to make going forward? And this is quite a big section because there are 12 months of those pages. And since this is undated, you do not have to start at January or February. You just write in the month at the top of the page up there so that you know which month you're on. Now the monthly meal planning calendars. What I have to go with is progress, not perfection at this, because while I would like to be a meal planner, I'm not all that great at it yet. I'm still working on it. So uh, this is where the regular calendar layout comes into play. And again, uh, you'll have to write in the own dates based on the month it is. There are 12 months worth of the meal planning calendars. Um, over here, you'll see there's a note section, and this note section is really for whatever you think uh, would be most helpful to you in the meal planning process, whether it's things you need to thaw out for future dinners, uh, things you need to use up that might be going, uh, might be expiring soon, uh, or just, you know, odds and ends, things like spices that you might need to buy at the grocery store for uh, the meals that you have planned to cook. Now the gift card inventory pages. If you are a couponer like me, then you know how many gift card deals we have and just we can accumulate a lot of gift cards and we're rolling gift cards into more gift cards and things like that at Publix, at Target. You know, at Publix we get those, uh, spend $50, get $10 off a $50 gift card, you know, and we have e-gift cards. We get, uh, you know, if we get a gift card, 
back from Ibotta or Fetch Rewards. You know, those are e-gift cards. And this is to help keep track of all of those gift cards. Now you do want to probably keep them in a set location so that you can find them all. But sometimes it gets hard to track, you know, the amounts that are left on them and things like that. This long line here, the amount, that is so long because I wanted to be able to track incremental spending or the rolling of the gift cards, like I said, uh, at Publix or Target or things like that. The note section is meant to help keep track of gift card location, uh, what you plan on using it for, say you're saving them up to use for Christmas gifts, what are you planning on using it for? Then we move on to the holiday section, and this is for you to keep track of Christmas gifts or you know whatever major holiday, or whatever major gift giving holiday you celebrate, this section is for that. The vacation section is for tracking expenses paid uh, when you go on vacations. Don't forget to start recording the purchases before the trip also. That means airfare, if you're booking hotels early, anything like that, you want to go ahead and jot down what it is and the amount here. Now, ideally you would have a starting amount. You would have it, the vacation savings built up in your sinking funds or in your little savings section. You would put that here. I would go ahead and if you're taking multiple vacations, you might wanna make a title or name your vacation up here. Um, because as you see, there are multiple different vacation pages. This page, there's nothing on the back. And this page, there's also nothing on the back because um, I wanted you to be able to tear those out when you left for your trip so that you can continue to write down uh, what you spent money on during your vacation so that you could just keep track of it because I know how easy it is to be able to uh, just, you know, not really throw caution to the wind, but you know what I mean. It's easy to overspend while you're on vacation, you know, because you're like, oh, that's later me's problem, but it'll catch up to you. So track your expenses for vacations. Now, if you're interested in getting this book, I have a very special offer for you because I know you like saving money and I know that sometimes after the holiday season, money can be kind of tight. This offer will only be good through January 31st of this year, which is 2023. Uh, for the book launch, there is a 23% discount for the Nimble Budget Planner. That's this book. That means that for people in the United States, the promotional price will be $27.72. After January 31st, it will go to its regular list price of $36. So you really don't wanna wait on this. You can buy this book by going to lulu.com's online bookstore. Um, they are a print-on-demand company that I went through, so they say it should take three to five business days to print after you order it, and then they'll ship it to you. And then you'll just choose whichever shipping method you prefer. So I'll go ahead and leave a link and instructions in the description box below uh, so that you can find and buy this book if you want. And I hope to see you in the next video.